the problem for the new government is that because they didn't have a plan to govern, just a plan to get into government, the void that they're creating in policy is being filled by voices such as Corrie Bernardi's, who today is out there promoting an extreme agenda. It's an agenda that says that he's pro-family, but only the sort of family that he regards as being legitimate. Not sole parents, not families that involve uh, same-sex couples, not families that look different from what he sees as his ideal family type. He also seeks to impose his views on women's right to choose over controlling their own bodies. He also seeks to proclaim a freedom of religion, except for any religious view other than his own is not seen as legitimate, and he wants that view to be involved directly in politics. He also speaks about freedom of the individual, except if you're an individual in a workplace who is powerless against uh, the relative strength of an employer. By bringing back the elements of work choices that he advocates, he would take away the power of individuals to bargain collectively uh, with their work colleagues in the workplace. So this is a very narrow agenda being filled by Corrie Bernardi. And this is someone who has been a close confidant of the now Prime Minister Tony Abbott, was indeed the Parliamentary Secretary and one of the key advisers uh, to Tony Abbott up until uh, late last year. So it's up to members of the government from Tony Abbott down to dissociate themselves from these comments of Cory Bernardi. If they don't do that, then one can take the view that Cory Bernardi has been put out there to push this divisive agenda. What Australians need is political leadership, but political leadership that unites the nation, not one which divides it. We're a tolerant community, we're a diverse community and political leaders need to recognise that diversity, uh, not succumb to this very narrow political agenda that Corrie Bernardi is out there promoting uh, once again today.